Facility Commission. Um, and we're going to start our program and kick it off with Commissioner McCosh. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome all to City Hall in this um, most inclement weather day of the year. Um, so I wanted to say thank you for your flexibility. We had to move things indoors at the last minute, but I think it worked out well. It was pouring this morning, and we thought there was no way we could have you all outside in the rain. So we're really glad that so many people showed up, because we know there are transportation difficulties um, for people with mobility challenges. So anyway, I would like to kick off the event before we get into our formal program with um, some remarks from our city councilor, Ed Flynn, who is sitting in the audience right here. Um, Ed is a disabled vet and is very active in disability issues and veterans issues. So I thought he would be a great speaker for today's event because unfortunately, Mayor Walsh is unable to attend, he's traveling. And our human, Health and Human Services Cabinet Chief, Marty Martinez, is also traveling. So we wanted to get someone from, someone official from government to address the crowd. So I'd like to welcome Councilor Ed Flynn. Thank you, Commissioner. And it's an honor for me to be here with you this afternoon. And thanks for the opportunity uh, to speak before this group. I'm, I'm proud of all the outstanding work you're doing, uh, Commissioner McCosh, but I'm also proud of the outstanding leaders that we have here that are doing so much great work across our city in support of persons with disabilities, making sure that they're treated with respect, they're treated with dignity, and uh, that's what Mayor Walsh has been doing since he started, even as a state legislator, is making sure that our persons with disabilities are like elderly, um, have equal access, equal rights that everybody else has. And I also see in the back of the room is City Councilor Michael Flaherty and Representative David Beal. Michael represents the City of Boston and David represents South Boston and Dorchester. So thank you to those um, gentlemen for being here. But on behalf of the City Council, I also have a proclamation that I want to present to Kristen and to the Commission for all outstanding work that you have done uh, representing the city so well. As Kristen mentioned, I'm a disabled veteran and I often walk with my parents who are elderly and who have difficult, um, difficulty moving around, but they have custody of a special needs little boy if you've ever seen them around. Um, and the little boy can't walk or he can't speak. And when I'm walking with my parents, I, 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 I see the challenges they have with a child walking up Broadway trying to cross the intersection and um, you're in the crosswalk and the car would speed right by you. They got us if you're an 80 year old person with a special needs child or, or anyone else. So pedestrian safety is something we have focused on um, on the city council. We recently worked with Kristen and the commission. We had a hearing, the city council hearing on um, access for the disabled. Uh, we, can, we want to continue to have a, a quarterly or, or biannually um, hearing on the city council that makes sure that we want to make sure that the rights and the um, issues of persons with disability are heard, and uh, we also enact on them as well. We we focus a lot, or I focus a lot now on a lot of ongoing construction we see taking place in our city, but I also see the developers cutting off access for the elderly and persons with disability, making it very challenging um, for persons with disability to walk down the street or, or mothers with children walking down the street or, or the elderly. So those are issues that are top priorities for me. Again, I just want to say how proud I am of Kristen, how proud I am of you for never giving up on people, for advocating for persons with disabilities. And Boston is a much better city because of your advocacy, your tireless work, your commitment. And uh, I just want to say thank you for, for everything you, you're doing to make Boston a great city it is. And on behalf of the City Council, I want to say thank you to Kristen and to the Commission for outstanding work. And we're very proud of you, Kristen and the
much, Council Flint, and also I'd like to acknowledge Council Cleverly, Representative Field, um, for coming to our event today. So every year um, we have this event, Eight Day Celebration Day. This is our ninth annual event, and it's celebrating the 29th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. And every year we pick a theme and a group to honor, and it's been really relevant every year. In 2011, we honored the Architectural Access Board for their work with us on installing the access path at City Hall Plaza. In 2013, we honored Spalding for their support and work with survivors of the Boston Marathon along with Pauling. In 2015, we honored the, honored the MBTA for their work on accessibility improvements to Government Center Station. And then this year, we have another very relevant theme. We're honoring the work that agencies and people have done on climate change and its effect on persons with disabilities. Just this week, we can see this past week, we had temperatures at 100 degrees. Uh, today it's 60 degrees. We have wild fluctuation in temperatures. We have major events that haven't been seen in this area before. I just got a news flash before I came down that a tornado touched down and came caught today. So we know climate change is real, even if everybody doesn't believe that it's real. So we want to honor some agencies that have, one agency in particular that's done a lot of work in support of persons with disabilities. And that's the Boston Public Health Commission Office of, Office of Public Health Preparedness. And I'd like to introduce Monica Velez um, Lupi from our commission, from the Boston Public Health Commission, who is also in the Health and Human Services Cabinet for the City of Boston. So I'd like to welcome Monica.
uh, work from this new grant that we've received. So with that, I'll call up uh, Stacey Cochran, who is our director in the Office of Public Health Preparedness, to uh, talk to you about some of the things that she's leading with the team back at the, uh, the Office of Public Health Preparedness. Just before Stacey uh, speaks, I just want to encourage people to not block the doorways and to come further in so that we have uh, access for everyone. So please come up front and fill in these seats. Uh, we just want to make sure that everybody is able to view um, and be able to hear the presentation and hear what Stacey has to say. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you, Monica, and thank you to Mayor Walsh and Commissioner Rakash for hosting this event. We're happy to be here celebrating the Americans with Disabilities Act and honored to be recognized for our work. As Monica said, my name is Stacey Cooper. I'm the director for the Office of Public Health Preparedness at the Boston Public Health Commission. I'm joined here by many of my staff whose hard work is the reason why I'm here speaking to you all today. They're all back over there right behind Monica. They're all wearing their jackets so you can tell who they are. So at the city's public health department, our priorities are always focused on people and health. We strive to ensure racially just and equitable planning before emergency. Our work focuses on uplifting and strengthening resilience within our communities and ensuring that we are preserving, promoting, and protecting the health and well-being of all of Boston's residents. Um, we do this a couple of different ways. So first, we focus on inclusive planning. We do a lot of planning both for public health um, responses and work that we would be leading in the public health department, but we also make sure that we are participating in planning efforts that are happening across the city with other um, other partners. So again, to make sure that we're focusing on people and health in these initiatives. We also support response to emergencies. Um, so we run what's called the Medical Intelligence Center. It's the coordination center um, to coordinate public health and healthcare agencies in the city of Boston. So again, we're looking during emergencies to make sure that we are continuing to provide the critical needed health care services um, their emergencies. The final way that we're looking at our planning efforts are through recovery. So we all know that disasters, when they happen, the recovery phase from disasters can take months or even years um, for both infrastructure, but more importantly for people to recover um, from disasters. So we focus on both planning for disaster recovery, but then also leading the recovery efforts once disasters happen. Commissioner Mukash mentioned that today the theme is climate change and emergency preparedness. And so while we focus on all hazard planning, and basically that just means that we will get all the impacts from different types of emergencies, regardless of what the emergency is. We view climate change as one of the biggest public health threats that we're facing today. And so when we think about the impacts of hurricanes and flooding and blizzards and all these other weather events that we've seen across the country, we, we can see the importance of having inclusive plans for responding and more importantly for recovering from these emergencies. These events have real impact on people's lives because a lot of the policies and plans that were created either didn't meet the needs of the residents or they didn't take into account the changing extreme nature of weather events due to climate change. So under Mayor Walsh's leadership, many Boston agencies collaborate to ensure that we as a city create inclusive plans for emergencies. In our public health planning, some of our many partners include the Mayor's Commission for Persons with Disabilities, the Age Strong Commission, the Boston Office of Emergency Management, the City of Boston Environment Department, and the Boston Healthcare Preparedness Coalition. So the Healthcare Coalition is a partnership of many of Boston's public health and healthcare so we're talking about all the hospitals, all the community health centers, the long-term care facilities, emergency medical services, public health, home health agencies, dialysis clinics, all of the partners that really take care of the health needs of our, our residents. Uh, we work together to again, do that planning, response, and recovery through that form. So talking a little bit about some of the past work that we've done, um, one of the major initiatives that we worked on was developing a curriculum for training staff who work in the city's emergency shelters that open up um, during emergencies. 
So we worked with the, the Disabilities Commission, with the Office of Emergency Manager, Management, and the Boston Centers for Youth and Families to ensure that the training materials were reflective of the different access and functional needs that people have, and also to ensure that the guidance complied with ADA requirements. We've organized and hosted emergency preparedness workshops for people with disabilities at the annual Abilities Expo, which is held in Boston every year in September. And we have and will continue to host workshops for our Get Ready, Be Safe, Stay Healthy program, which is the model that we use to talk about emergency preparedness. Uh, we table at events, we provide workshops for specific groups, uh, such as nursing homes, dialysis clinics, faith-based organizations, and we train residents to deliver this workshop within their own neighborhoods and communities. Through this program, we're also able to provide basic emergency preparedness supplies. For them. So currently, we're planning for extreme temperatures and weather, such as this weekend's heat emergency. Uh, and the first step in that process was to update our existing outreach materials and to create new materials, including those for persons with disabilities and caregivers. We're working with our Office of Emergency Management and with the City of Boston Environment Department to continue planning for the impacts of these extreme temperatures and to ensure that we're communicating um, and providing appropriate services whenever these types of emergencies occur. In our near future, as Monica mentioned, we're looking to advance our climate preparedness work. Uh, this type of work is going to go beyond um, education and awareness, and we will focus on three main areas. So the first three is we are looking to expand working on our providing skills-based trainings for individuals around emergency preparedness, and building capacity for skills, such as CPR, first aid, until help arrives, and psychological first aid in our community. The second area is going to provide support for residents, neighborhoods, and communities, again, to uplift, uplift and strengthen resilience that we already know exists within our communities at the local level. Our hope is that we can build community capacity to support the response to and recovery from emergencies that happen. And finally, we hope to help support pathways for communities to engage in city and state policy and planning around climate change. There's a lot of work that we all know is happening at the policy level around climate change. And we want to make sure that we support our residents and communities in having a voice, their voices heard, and their needs met in these different policies. Again, it's an honor to be recognized, and I want to thank the staff um, for all of their hard work. Um, we've done some great work in the office, and we're really focused and committed on um, working towards climate preparedness. Um, we recognize there is still a lot more to do. We're committed to, to do that. So with that, I'll wrap up my comments and I'll turn it back over to Commissioner Kosh. I'll be around for a bit afterwards also if people have questions or want more specifics about the program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stacey and Monica and your whole team. Um, I just also want to give a quick shout out to my staff. Um, we work closely together on these issues. Um, Jessica, my chief of staff, has done a lot of work with the um, Boston Public Health Commission on um, policy, things like extreme, extreme temperature, outreach for persons with disabilities, and uh, she works closely with them. I've worked on emergency shelters, assessment for accessibility, and my architectural access team Sarah and Patricia have worked on um, things like the aqua fence, which is a fence that comes out of the sidewalk to, to block uh, rising floods, not rising tides. So together we do a lot of work and we will continue to do so moving forward. And now I want to introduce um, Mark Lee Alexander, who is leading an initiative called Canada to Key West. She's doing this to raise awareness about how climate change affects persons with disabilities. So, Mark Lee will give some brief remarks. Thank you, Commissioner McCosh, for allowing me to speak here, and thanks to all of you today for being here and allowing us to participate in this wonderful event. Um, and I love the topic. I believe climate change is the most important issue we need to think about in terms of people with disabilities. And with climate change, I also mean weather extremes and variability that we ex explored 
and experience this weekend. Um, that's why I'm a rehab doctor, and I actually quit my job, and as did my husband, who's a psychologist, and I'll shout out to him at the back of the room, to walk from Canada to Key West. Um, I had tried for years to get this issue addressed at rehab meetings and get providers to pay attention unsuccessfully. So I decided I needed to do something radical. So we are walking from Canada to Key West to highlight the issues of people with disabilities, in extreme weather, and also look at issues of accessibility. And we're doing this to get people to tell their stories about how weather extremes and climate change are affecting them now because this is an area that has been relatively ignored for people with disabilities. Now, I think in Boston, there's a lot of great things going on, and so if you're in Boston, you can feel privileged, but when there is a disaster or something, you could be in another city. And so you need to be aware, we need to keep speaking about this. And one of the things I want to bring um, up and talk about as a goal of our walk is to start the day for tomorrow. Our idea is that we all know there's Earth Day, and it's actually the 50th anniversary of Earth Day this year. But the Earth is going to be here. Regardless of what happens with climate change, the Earth will be here. It may not be livable, but it will be here. But the question is, what will happen to people? And people with disabilities are the most vulnerable. And for those of us that may not have disabilities now, if we think about 20, 30 years from now, it's likely we will be disabled. So the day for tomorrow is People Day. And we're having it on September 22nd, the day prior to the UN Climate Summit. And the idea is that we get together on this day and prepare. And interestingly, as I've learned about what's going on in Boston, the 22nd is also the start of, the, of a week, but also the official week, I guess, is the 24th to the 30th. Boston also has a wonderful group called Citizens Responding to Extreme Weather. And we have Vernon Walker, who's the program manager in the back of the room. And Crew also has a great program on this. But I think we need to bring attention to this issue, and that is our mission. So if you haven't gotten one of our phone pockets, please get, you know, I'm happy to show you one, and please consider following us on Canada to Key West and helping with this mission because I went into this as a rehab professional because rehab professionals have not gotten it yet. And I do think as part of rehab, we need preparedness for extreme weather. And I think what you're doing today and bringing together is great. So thank you all. Thank you, Mark Ali, for those remarks. And please do check out the Canada to Key West website and follow their journey from Canada to Key West. Uh, next stop is New York City, is that correct? New York City, come up. Oh, yes. <laughs> Long Island and then New York City. Okay, Long Island, yeah. Okay, so um, just a few more uh, people I want to recognize. Um, Vernon, yes, from Crew, nice to see you here. Um, some members of our advisory board that are in the room. Um, other Health and Human Services staff and colleagues, and other City of Boston employees who support our work. Uh, I just want to thank everybody once again for coming. We do need to wrap up the program now because we uh, have other, other people who are using this room. But I do want to just give a shout out to everybody who came out today. Thank you for coming out in this extreme weather. And hopefully, we'll work on this issue so that we can uh, really improve the planet's weather moving forward. So thank you, everybody.